Welcome to the fourth video of Indie Resources, how to make a browser-based RTS. This is the Halls of Ahala. Um, in this video, we're going to do some Ajax. Um, I went ahead and, and added in the login, just a real quick login. It's nothing special. If you don't know what I did here, you need to go back and watch my other videos on it, because I'm not going to explain them in this video. It's kind of a waste of time. Um, just to kind of show you, I mean, they're really nothing at all. All I did was username, password, and a, a location, which is map R and map C which showing you the database I've got players I went ahead and just did a test and then it automatically puts you on 5-5 five, five, which think of it as like a, a grid or an Excel spreadsheet column 5 row 5 and we'll get into how that's going to work later because I'm thinking each player will own can own like a square and that's where they'll build it or they can buy other squares but it'll be based on who uh, who buys the square but for now we're just going to leave it at a, at a default where they automatically start at 5-5 five, five, and everybody owns the same thing and then I added in buildings which I'm going to show you here in a minute so what I've added in let's go ahead and just log in you can go ahead and register the register all works just use whatever you want there um, when I export it I'll leave test as, as it already there to where you can use it basically what I wanted to do now was make it to where it saved it we, 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 had, it, we had everything kind of working but as soon as you refreshed it was brand new again so I want to make it save it off there so if we um, click the house and we build it you'll notice it's there if we refresh it's still there don't know what that is and you know what I think I do know what that is let's open up our uh, it's going to be main functions, and it's probably because of that sprite maybe too big. Um, anyway, here it is. We can try. I really don't want to change that yet. We'll ch we'll, we'll look at it here in a second. But let me show you what I've start what I, what I've done new here. If I can find out where I'm at. Okay. Um, under index. What I have added new is I've added, of course, a connect uh, page that will actually connect to our database, which is just a basic, easy little database connect, um, which I've used in my tutorials before. Same here with here. You just need to get all the information from the player, or if they're not logged in, send them elsewhere. And then I've created a couple um, global variables in JavaScript. I know people are going to scream and yell about global variables, but... Uh, I do use them for things like this. We want to be able to save the player name from PHP. So we want to turn a PHP variable into a JavaScript variable. And this is how we do it. We just uh, define the JavaScript and then echo out the PHP and it'll it'll store it in that variable. So I stored their map location and their name. Um, let's see what else did I add. We can ac actually get rid of this. And I made building a, um, I was having trouble with it, so I made it a global variable for now, but we may change it later. And that's all I really changed on that. Now, if we go to main functions at the top, you'll notice that I created a new function called build map. And if you scroll all the way to the bottom, basically what we want to be able to do is when the page first loads, when we hit refresh, it places the buildings the last place we built them. So if I build another one here, we hit refresh, they're still there because what it's doing is going into the database, finding out the location and dropping them there based on our player name and our map location. And once we get map locations, you'll be able to move and it'll build wherever on that map location we're at. So to look at how that's done, we're basically doing Ajax. I'm not going to go into huge what Ajax, how Ajax works. Just know that this is a good template that you can use. Basically recreating, creating a variable called Ajax request that's a new XML HTTP request. Um, checks the browser and if, if your browser can't use it then it's going to throw an error which all nearly all browsers other than of course the older IEs are, aren't going to work. Um, we're going to skip down here because the radio state is not for yet. What we're going to do is we're going to skip down to here and it's doing an AJAC request dot open. It's doing that HTML request, HTTP request, I'm sorry. And right now I'm going to use Git, met Git methods. We can use post later but I'd rather get us started on Git and then we'll worry about post later. And I'm calling build build building dot php. It's it's throwing in the map, the character name, the um. You know what? I'm on the save building. Let's move down to to build map. There we go. It's about the same thing. It's going to go git map dot php. It's going to it's going to send the name and the map location of the player. So if we go to git map. 
you'll see that it includes the connect. It um, grabs those variables and turns them into these variables. So now that should be our player name and our location. And then we do a select all from buildings where the map equals 5, map R equals 5, map C equals 5, and the player name equals name. And if we go into the actual database, you'll see in the buildings, you'll see that there's those two houses right there. If we delete one of them, go back and hit refresh, it's gone. <clears throat> so it's doing a while. So it's so for every single line in the database that, that matches 5-5 five, five and the player's name test, it's going to echo out the the X location, the Y location, and the type from the database. And if we look here, it's echoing out the type, which is house, and then our X and Y location. And it's going to echo it out. Once it echoes it out, we go back to our main functions, <clears throat> that's going to turn into what's called Ajax request dot response text. It's that's the response it's getting back. So we build a variable called building amount and it and what I'm doing is, is I'm splitting it by question mark. And if you look whoops my bad. If you look under get map, for every single one of them we have, I put a question mark at the end. So it's going to create it's going to create a line that is a building and a question mark, building and a question mark, building and a question mark. So if we split split it by the question mark, it will um it will actually give us how many building amount, the, the array building amount will have each one of those in there. Then we can do building count equals building amount dot length. So how many is in the array now? Because there's always a question mark at the end, it's going to give you one extra. And I know I could go through and put an if statement, but it's just easier just to do building count equals building count minus one. Get, you know, get rid of one of those. Um, the next thing we're going to do, we need to create, it, it'll throw an error if you don't, at least it did for me. Here we didn't actually, because you're using dot split, it's automatically creating it an array and defining it as an array. But if since we're since we're creating a new sprite and we're going to turn it into an array, we need to define that array. So new building equals new array. So now for every single one of those, for every single item, it echoes back minus the one, we're going to do a for statement because we want to split it up. So if there's three houses, it's going to come back with four. So we minus one, that's three. It's saying, okay, there's three houses in there. So we're going to do a for statement to loop through this three times. And it's basically saying current building equals building amount, um, whatever that, so in other words, zero will be our first one, dot split. And we're now we're going to split it by these slashes. And if we go back to our get map, you'll see that every single one of these has a slash between it. So now we're dividing it between each one of these. And this is a real great method because you could build an entire map location area just off of one line of code because we're splitting it between each little segment we're dividing. And you can use spaces or whatever as long as you define the split that way. Um, so now we've, now we've turned current building into an array for every um, for every one that we, we loop through. So we're going to do new building I, which right now is zero, so we're creating a new. We've created this array. It's a new sprite. We're telling it to its image is going to be current building two, um, and how that works because we split it into three parts. Remember, arrays always start at zero. We got zero, one, two. So whatever that type is, which is the building name, that's going to fall under. Oops, if I could get this right, I keep going the wrong direction. I do it all the time. Anyway, it's going to fall here. So if we look in our this is type as house for the first one. When the first one comes through, this is going to be house underscore three. And if we go into our images and buildings, you'll see house underscore three. That's how it knows to put it. So when it's tower, you'll see tower. And just to kind of show you how that works, which I just noticed for some reason now when I build a tower, it keeps building a house. And we'll fix that here in a minute. But when I hit refresh, it's going to come from the database and show a tower. Um, so it places that. And I'm wondering if because it's showing because it's showing that little piece right there and the reason why is because when we first build it we're using and we're using that uh, this long picture right here so I'm wondering no actually we're not I don't know why it's doing that so what we we can try this let's let's break this down to about 72 and see what happens eh, seems to work so let's do that let's do 70 eh, 
so I guess that's it. I, I'll look at it later and try to figure out why, but I'm not too worried about it right now. It seems to be working. So then the next thing we want to do is we're going to set the limits to the house, which isn't really important because it shouldn't go out, but in case of a cheater or something trying to do something weird, this will kind of make sure that he can't do it. Then we're going to do the Y limits. We're going to set the frame now. Here's something that's very important that took me forever to figure out, and I'll show you what happens. This is crazy. If you remove that and leave it to switch on, when we go to refresh, it sends everything up here. And if you go to inspect element, look what it does to the the top and the left. It just keeps adding zeros to it. And I couldn't figure it out. I kept working. I was like, what in the world is going on? It's not looping. It's not doing anything. And for some reason, with that dot switch on, it continues to loop through that item. And I, I'm not sure why, but the easy fix. So if you see that later, you know it's because it's switched on. And I don't think we need it switched on for later on for any reason. So I'm pretty sure switching it just leaving it without the switch on as a default should fix it and um, maybe somebody that's worked with this uh, with this library can tell me why but for now it's not important then we're just going to set the z-axis and then we're going to actually move it to current building 0 current building 1 and if you remember in our database it's pulling those two so if we go back to our get map there's 0 there's one, so our x and our y. If we go to main functions, there's our zero and our one, our x and our y. So it's moving them to that x and y. So that's basically how it builds the map in the beginning. Now, how I save the map is almost exactly the same thing, except for when we place the item, we're going to do save building. So this is when we collect it, click it. It's going to run the function save building. We come out down here to save building. Almost everything's the same, except for we're doing build building.php. And if we go into build building, and it looks like I'm about out of time on this video, so I'm going to come back on the next video.